In this video, we'll take a look at the dashboard capabilities in Allure Test Ops. If we have a look at Allure Test Ops, we typically get the overview dashboard out of the box, which already gives us some information about our project. But of course, we can fully customize that and create our own dashboard. Let's do this real quick, but first we're gonna start a few more launches. I have a launch already here that comes from a Spring Coffee demo that we can just start locally with the testing pipeline. What it does, it is a Spring application for which we can use to order coffee. And this build here will execute a number of different tests. First of all, code level unit tests, but then also, as you quickly saw, some UI tests with Selenium and Selenite. And the launch already gives us an idea that we have a bunch of tests. We could have a look at the um, tree uh, of the test results and all of these things. Let's close the launch. For now, we're interested in the dashboards. How we do this, we create a new dashboard. We just now call it tests, which should give us a better overview view or a different overview over the tests that we have. For the dashboards, we can add a widget here or here, for which we would like to start with, let's say, all tests for a particular type here. So we can have all sorts of um, analysis there. For example, we could have um, the launch um, trend or automation trend. Let's start uh, with this launch trend by date. And then we could, for example, query for specific test cases or also for the launches. So which we would like to include. Let's have all of them at first, which is just all tests then in this case. And then typically what we do or what we can do for a better overview, we can say we can clone this, which you see in this functionality, and then change it to, well, something else. For example, the UI tests in which we would like to have a query now to further query and specify to select only the UI tests, which will be done uh, with the layer that is now UI tests. And here you already can see how many test cases are matched, whether the query is correct correct. Let's try this here. And then we have the UI tests, which then are just fewer. So we can clone this again for, for example, the unit tests. That is another test layer. So we have this and then similar story. We can include this and put it here into a dashboard as well. Where does this information come from? Well, from our test cases that we have here. So this is one example in our code. We have the Allure ID that has been created uh, with the IDE plugin. We annotate this with unit test. That is our own custom annotation that just uh, takes the layer, which is um, configured to have the unit test layer here. So we have all of this annotated with unit test. We can further specify some features, some own suites, some owners, and take, of course, all of these information also in the dashboard. This is a different example for a UI test that comes from a UI integration test class here that is annotated with UI test. And this now will cause the different layer to be added to this particular test case, which then enables us to have different test cases here. Okay, let's add another widget for Call this again all um, tests for example for a pie chart we could have this for example so what uh, was the last uh, status of all uh, tests here so we have these many um, tests in total for this particular um, well the previous launch do the same thing with the ui tests and say this should be again the layer UI tests, you get now the different test cases that we have in this case, and we can further customize our dashboard just as we did before. Same thing for unit tests. So this already gives us some idea of, well, how many uh, tests we have. We could then go and say, okay, we would like to have a better overview in case something um, doesn't uh, fully work. 
So that's uh, that's one thing here. If you pay attention, why is it two and three and not five, but six here for all tests? Well, these are all tests for including the manual tests. If we have a look at our test cases, I included a manual test that manually checks the layout in my website, which then is also included in the list. If we don't do that, we will go into the manual tests in a second as well. Um, if we don't want to have that, we could change here further the query and say, okay, please edit that and say only for the test cases that has, uh, well, the automation true. So if um, that is automated and not a manual test, then we have five in total. So then we could say this is not all of the all tests, but basically all the automated tests, whatever you would like to have. But you see that you can change this and have this in the queries and the dashboard widgets as well. Okay, let's have some um, more um, interesting uh, examples here. So let's say we would like to have all of this in um, this particular uh, test dashboard or we would like to have a new uh, dashboard for then some sort of stability or uh, duration of the test. We can uh, we can do uh, this for example we could call this now uh, test details or in any other way that you would like to have and say for example now I would like to have a particular well the top test cases um, of something for example, by a metric like success rate or duration. So what is the success rate of all tests? Well, we can say, okay, this should be all tests again, or again, let's do the automation true. And we have our five test cases, which now, as you can see, have the success rate as a percentage value. So then we can say, okay, uh, that is kind of interesting. Let's have this. And then maybe also for the unit tests or UI tests, same uh, same story here. We can say, okay, the layer for the UI tests. And that gives us then a, um, a different overview also with the list overview that here shows us this over time, which for us is now always 100%. Of course, this is not quite straightforward or you could say boring, but then if we change something in the project, if the test success rate changes, this is very different. Okay, what is also interesting, if we add a widget for the duration, so if we call this um, duration, for example, for the top test cases, how long do they take? This is very interesting because then we see which tests actually take uh, the most time. So for all tests, this we don't have that many tests in our project yet. This is already very insightful. We see, okay, some of them run really, really quickly, especially the unit tests, but some of them, like this UI test, takes two seconds. Okay, so maybe then this might be a candidate to further optimize it if we have a chance to do so. And same story again, I can say, okay, I would like to have this for my UI test to just have a more specific overview in case I have a lot of them and include this here for the UI test duration or maybe for the unit test duration here as well. So we can have this, add it again, have it here in our dashboard. So this also works and we get the idea. Okay, so this is already um, kind of interesting. Now, just for the sake of the example, um, let's fail a test. Let's make a test fail here. For example, we would like to just change one of the uh, UI tests uh, here for an index page that maybe the page header uh, should now be different in the test, which then, of course, makes the test fail just for the sake of the example. So let's say we would like to have this. I run my pipeline again, which at least for the one UI test, I now expect to fail which is okay. So my pipeline is configured in a way that it runs all of the tests and it will upload the results regardless, even if we have a build failure, which is of course what we want so that we see these results here. <clears throat> then we have the launches here available. So that's that. We have one failed um, test now. That is this particular uh, one. But then also what we can do, um, let's add another test uh, case, especially the manual test here. I would like to add the manual test that we have and run this as well. So once we add this to this particular launch and we see, okay, now one test is still in progress, which is namely the manual test that we have. So let's go through it, check layout, colors, page boundaries, font and spelling, assuming all of this is now correct. Okay, here passed, now this test passed. We have one more test now, but still we have our fail test. So let's close the launch here and let's have a look at our dashboard. 
So first of all, we see in the test um, details that now this particular test doesn't have a success rate of 100%. So only, well, sometimes uh, it worked. Of course, we still have the previous launches. So you see now the difference there. Okay, it didn't really affect uh, the duration here. And now we see also the difference, especially here in uh, these UI uh, tests. Okay, so that's that. Um, we have this particular example. Let's have a look again at this particular uh, dashboard. This is now the status or we can change this actually to last execution status. Then we should have that. So this now regards the particular previous launch that again, you could further query. So this makes sense if we would like to have uh, the overview here in these three pie charts of the very um, previous launch that we have, so which we can now see here. Okay, so that's already kind of interesting and can be very insightful. Let's add another dashboard for automation or manual tests that we can say, okay, so for example, we could say, um, what would we like to have for the automation, we would like to see if let's call this automation status or, or something like that, where we would like to have a map um, chart here. So of a particular, let's say um, all the features that we have or the suites. What is this? This shows us how many tests are, aut um, are automated already or how many manual tests we have. So the, for the front end, you see, well, we have one a manual test. So this is well, not fully, fully green. Um, so we see that here the overview. Now I only have uh, three particular features. I could also uh, take the suite instead. We can have, as you see, uh, some, um, some different criteria. That just gives an overview of uh, how much is automated already, especially if you have a bigger project. This can be very helpful, like what uh, to start out with. For the manual tests, which of course we can say, well, what is the duration to perform all of these, which now is a duration that has a human factor, of course. So now we could say automation false, which now should give us one test case here. So we only have one and see, okay, how long does this take? And if we had multiple of these, we could uh, go and say, okay, how long do these tests actually take? So that was 10 seconds um, when, when that was performed from start to finish. And then we also see some well insights here. So this can be a success rate, this can be a duration, similar thing like before, we could use these manual tests here as well to of course, uh, query that and display that in a dashboard that we can have. Okay, let's show one more dashboard for, let's call this a team dashboard. If we say we would like to show different tests and different insights based on different users. So these users work in a way that we can define an owner, like a user, a human who owns uh, this test. So this uh, is owned by uh, John Doe and Jane Doe, these two different um, tests. Then we can, of course, also say, well, uh, we would like to um, have this, for example, in a similar widget that we had before. Let's say we would like to have something like a test case uh, pie chart again by last execution status, something like John's test, where we now say, okay, we need a query for this um, here as well. So this will be role owner. That is the particular field um, that we have where we say, okay, this should be John Doe, which matches two test cases or Jane Doe, which matches these three. Okay, let's do this for John Doe first. Let's say we have John's tests and then Jane's tests. Let's include this here. This Jane's test in, um, includes the one that just previously failed. So this is the um, last execu uh, the previous execution status. We could do the same thing uh, for these manual tests that we have and so on and so forth. Um, so let's do, um, do this. And for example, the top test cases by the duration. How long do John's tests take? and who basically who created the slowest uh, test that we have. Let's have this here. So since 
John wrote all of these um, unit tests. They run pretty fast. Gain though for the owner. So you see, we can also use these owner properties uh, to have that. We could also include uh, the ones for the whole team. So we could uh, do a similar thing. Um, let's do this teams tests or all tests. So similar thing just um, to to give a comparison where we say, okay, let's make this um, smaller. Move it over there that we can include uh, this for the whole team. You get the idea. We can have this in a way that also gives us the overview here over the whole team and the individual team members. So this works in this way. Let's make this smaller and say we clone this for again the whole team's test duration. This should now just have the automation true, where we have all of the tests, where we see this particular comparison that we can do. So that's that. And then we can build uh, these dashboards with the insights of the particular, uh, well, of the particular developers that are involved, the test owners that is also available in um, in this metric or in this criteria that here has been annotated with the tests or that is added to the test in Allure test ops. So this um, works very nicely. Also, what we have seen that we can compare multiple launches. So for example, if we say, well, what is the um, test success rate? Um, let's have test details here over time, which then you see it goes down when we have multiple launches, we can have a dashboard that displays uh, just the previous launch, the, the la uh, last uh, status here, that can be very helpful and see how to uh, further uh, get some insights, especially the details can be interesting when we say we would like to make our tests wait a little bit faster. So what are the uh, cases that we should spend time on? What is the state of the automation? Uh, what should we spend time on to um, automate here for manual tests? Because you see, you can also save a lot of time um, and effort uh, there. So these dashboards can be very helpful in this regard to just get a better overview of our testing uh, cases in our project, thanks to Allure Test Ops. Thanks a lot for watching.